Okay, so I've just gotten back. I've gone out with my GPS and my camera, and I went through the process of taking some pictures on a short drive. So as I sit back down to my computer, I went ahead and took the SD memory card out of the camera, and I'm opening that up on the computer. And I took two pictures while I was driving, and the first picture I took was of the clock uh, mode on the GPS. So I've got that ready to go. And the Android phone went ahead and emailed me my track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my email software here in a different window, and I'm going to copy that track over into the same file so we have that all together here. And what I'm going to do is I need to copy all this off the SD card, copy all that, and I need to move it into a practice SARX folder here. So I'm open that up. You can see I've done one other SARX. Let's right click and make a new folder. And let's just call this SARX testing. It'll be fine. And under SARX testing, like, we can create a sortie A001. Another new folder. This will be step one is unprocessed. I went ahead and pasted all those pictures in. Come up here and see that again. Okay, so under my practice SARX photos, I've got a testing SARX, I've got our sortie, and they're in all the file for unprocessed. If we go back there, I also want to add a folder for enhanced. Oops, I call that. Want to add a folder for watermarked. And I want to add a new folder for final product. This is the recommended layout that the Georgia Wing gives us. So I'm going to take everything in my own process. I don't want to mess with that at all. So I'm going to copy those and go back to my enhanced and paste those in. We're not going to be talking about the enhancement step here. So let's just go ahead and we're going to assume we're going to take these two pictures and we are going to watermark those with the RoboGeo software. So move those. We'll assume that I've enhanced them. And now we're going to copy those into the next step here, which would be for watermarking. Okay. Go back to the RoboGeo software. Step one, we're going to sync our clock by time zone and GPS. So this is the window that comes up. It is daylight savings time here, Atlantic. So I'm going to have to add that 60 minutes. Okay, when I hit open, it's going to bring up a window to allow you to find that file. I happen to have my SARX folder right off my desktop. So I've got that here. Go under testing. So you have to find that picture again and select it. Okay, it's going to bring that picture up. We see it's one hour or one o'clock, two minutes, 22 seconds. So I'm going to come down here now and type one, two, 26 seconds. I'm going to change that to PM. And I need to change the date. And you can just click on today. OK. So I set today. I set one hour, two minutes, 22 seconds. I set my daylight savings time. I'm in the correct time zone. I've got my picture selected. So it knows which picture timing I'm working with. And it gives me a conclusion that my camera offsets 47 seconds. So that's fine.
normally it'll be within a minute or two or three. If it's off significantly, you might want to check and make sure you chose the right date or you did the time length, uh, daylight, taving, daylight savings time correctly. Uh, maybe you have AM or PM wrong. So check those. We've got the camera offset. Close and I can go to step two. Now I need to select the folder that has those images. Okay, so I have it under my desktop. And it finds my two pictures I have stored in there. As you can see, it's bringing up the metadata information that it already has from just the picture. It's got the time and the date. It's got the file location, but no lat long or altitude or direction. So that's what we're going to be working on next, and we need to bring in the GPX file that we saved with our GPS. So that's going to be part of step three. Step three, I want to uh, geocode the photos with that long and altitude and direction from a track log photo, from a track log file. Got that here under our A001 unprocessed. Let's double click that. Great. So this brings in our lat long for those two positions. However, it does not give us direction. We'll need to deal with that in a little bit. We can move on to step four. Now we're going to do, we're going to stamp, let's see here, we're going to stamp and write the EXIF header, which is the bottom black section on the photo. So we want to do both of the above. We're going to put them in final. Yes, we want to specify the north arrows on the photos. It's going to bring up this. And it puts a question mark here because the geo metadata from the GPS does not tell it that information. So you're going to have to manually do that. And the way we move that arrow is just by clicking on whichever direction we want. We can hold our mouse in whatever area. This is uh, where it's going to take uh, a little bit of understanding of what happened during the flight and it'll serve you well if you take your headings or take your pictures from cardinal headings when you're out in the field on the air in the aircraft so that way you would know the picture is one of four choices either north south east or west but we still want to have it as north facing so in this case i know this picture was taken uh, Heading to the west, so north was in this direction. And then I can hit done. Actually, no, I'm going to hit next for the next picture. Next picture's up, and I know this was facing east, so north is going to be off to the left. And I can hit next. That's going to take me back to the first one. I can make corrections through those uh, string of pictures however I want. When I'm finished, marking my north arrows and I hit done. Now do I want to edit the uh, IPTC data? And yes, I do. This is where we can add some extra information. Um, extra information. Uh, we're just going to have Georgia as our state, Atlanta. We can put some kind of sublocation. Just say test location and this will get written into the watermark as well. So I'm going to head write the IPTC on this photo. You don't really see any effect until it moves to the next photo. If you want to change any of this, you can. Otherwise, it stays the same, and we'll write it again on this photo. Unfortunately, they don't give you a button to write on all photos. So if you have 100, you're going to have to go through in each one and hit this button until you get back to the first photo. So remember what your first one was, and then work your way through uh, until the end. So down here, we can see our status. We're on the two of two. So you don't really have to remember. You'll see this number counting up here until it gets to the end. So once we've written them all, we could write them all 
you know, two, three times, whatever, it doesn't matter. And then we're done. It actually takes a minute to process this. Finally, it says two were done successfully. That's good news. Now let's go back and under our final folder, now we see our two photos with watermarks. So we see the cap logo, the north flag, uh, the north arrow rather, and the data below where we called it test location, Atlanta, Georgia. And using the trial software of RoboGeo, these lat longs are going to be distorted to some degree. They will only be completely accurate if you purchase the software. And it also puts the date. That's where we want to be. And this is the finished product then that we would need to go to the third step in the overall process of transferring to our customer.